Put your hands together for the very funny Jamie Scandal! they're doing and that person is me. I <laughs> <laughs> don't need to be here. I'm starving too. You wouldn't think so with this big fat body, but the only thing I had to eat today was the bug that I accidentally popped into my mouth on the bike ride over here because, you know, RuPaul does drag race lip sync for your life, but in my world it's like heavy metal 90s lip sync for your life. So I'm coming up the bike path like, can you see it? Deeper today, if you can't, then it doesn't matter anyway. Like, you want it all, but you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Few things make you look stupider than accidentally eating a bug. But when you're fat, going up hills will also do this for you. So I have like famous people in my neighborhood, Upper West Side. I can't really afford to live there, let's just say. <laughs> Somebody is in a illegal sublet. Um, uh, I earned it though. I had to Anne Frank my way in and out of that sublet five years before I had to pretend to be married to the guy that's homeless. Anyway, uh, so I'm going up the hill, and the fatter you are, the harder it is, you know. And I'm like, and that's those first two steps on the incline. And right there is Deborah Winger, and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the most embarrassing ascent ever. And then, oh, the best, my favorite, besides the um, the guys that, uh, the delivery guys that are going the wrong way on the street and just pretend that you're not there. And now they have, they have the green, you know, bike lanes for you, and it's got a big fat arrow that says uptown or downtown, and I'm going the right way, I'm going uptown. And here comes downtown. This chick that looks like the mom in Precious, that lady Monique that won't shave her legs, right? <laughs> she thought what I thought was a Segway, but no, it's not a Segway. It's a motorized scooter because she's not having the pedal thing. And she's got a whistle in her mouth, right? And so I'm like, well, is she going to move or am I going to move? And it's like this, who are you? Who are you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This like, get the <laughs> she, And then I realize she's not going to move. What she's going to do is glare at me and blow the whistle. And I go, shooting off this way, I swear to God, nearly into the back of a trash truck as the thing's going like this, and I'm thinking, there, that might be the stupidest way to die. <laughs> Short of getting eaten by a hammerhead. Like, no, if I, was getting, if I get eaten by a shark, it needs to be a great way. If the hammerhead gets me, I'm punching my way out. I'm like, I'm gonna try again. I need the cool shark. <laughs> Even though in every movie that they make now, they make them go way too fast. I'm like, it's not a fucking Mako, okay? It's a great white. He's a porker. Quinn told us that. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> he moves slow. Why do you have this in <laughs> meters down. They're like, care, care, care. Just stop it. <laughs> messing with movies. King Kong, King Kong's way too big now. I'm sorry, I wasn't going to talk about this, but it pisses me off. <laughs> You could get a crush on your Ken doll, no problem, okay? Because Ken was like about this big. You could hold him in your hand and be like, I can easily shrink to be Ken's size, or he could one day grow to be as big as me. In your child mind, it seemed reasonable. And when we first met King Kong, Faye Ray, or whatever her fucking name is, she was about the size of a Barbie doll, right? Well, in the new King Kong, she's the size of a vitamin. What in the fuck? How can you get a crush on a girl that's the size of vitamin? When he first meets her, she's like an ant in the field. And he comes up, and I swear to God, I half expected him to reach over here and put on a giant pair of King Kong spectacles and be like, Is that the girl I'm supposed to have a crush on? Because she looks mighty small. <laughs> the fatter I get, the more I feel like I am King Kong. I think, well, you know, if you had a crush on Chris Pine, Chris Pine was the size of a vitamin. It just wouldn't work out. <laughs> so, I was going to talk about a lot of things. Oh, spring cleaning. I'm doing spring cleaning. The first thing I started with was my DVR. It was, it, it always at 97%, it wouldn't record any new shit. I thought I was taping the Tonys. No, nothing. Not even Stupid Fear of the Walking Dead. It pretends to record it and then it erases it. You want to know why? It's full of episodes of hoarders. Okay? <laughs> Boy, like, was it painful. They <laughs> made me feel like I got my shit together. You've got a liquefied cat in your fridge? That's 
something I've never had to worry about. <laughs> You're shitting in a bucket out in the backyard? Not a problem for me. I've got it together. <laughs> and so I found this box of like old love letters and I was like, oh my gosh, spring cleaning really brings up emotions. <laughs> I open up the, this box of tied up beautifully, the love of my life, Michael. Oh, Michael. He loved me so much. He told me he loved me so much that he had to invent a new word for love. And that word was grundle. So I open the letters and I go, I grundle you. And I'm like, oh, he did. And I remember all the times we were, you know, fucking in the park at night when we're not supposed to, or doing bad stuff in a movie theater, or maybe the sun's just twinkling through the window of the car and we're making out. I don't know. But I, I grundle you. I'm flashing back and I'm remembering that true love. And then I turn on the TV and Tosh.0 is on. And some kid is skateboarding and he's going down the handrail. And he lands right in his crotch. Ow! Oh, it's horrible. Tosh is laughing his ass off. And he goes, and that kid there, he gets what he deserves. Right in the tape, right in the grundle. <laughs> and I go, what? And I rewind it, because you get to do that with rectum cable that rapes your wallet every minute. At least they got the little button that goes back like this. So I go back, and sure enough, he said, right in the grundle. Well, what in the fuck? I go get my uh, urban dictionary, and I look it up. Well, uh, what is that? Please. I look it up, and it tells me that the definition of grundle is the area between your private parts and your butthole. <laughs> so he grundled me. That's, uh, and I'm like, every time you said it, were you just laughing at me inside? Like, oh my God. So, true love tarnished by Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna tell you a dead dog story, but I don't think I have time. What else? Oh, I was gonna tell you. I thought my life was gonna be different than this, and I can't really figure out where it went wrong. You know, when I was a kid, I used to, I used to think I would never wanna win the lottery. That is fucking cheating, man. That's like cheating life. I want to make it my own, right? Well then, you know, my friend told me, it's hope tax for the poor. No one ever wins the lottery. And I'm like, all right, but I don't care. I, I, I want to be in it to win it. I'm living the dream. So I end up with like a whole Ziploc bag full of lottery tickets because I'm too stupid to know how to like check it. I guess I thought someone was just going to call me up and let me know if I won. <laughs> so one day I see this lady at the Zany Zapper machine and she's like putting the ticket under there and I go, oh. That's how you do it. I bring the whole bag into the to the convenience store, which is inconvenient because it's always full of scary people that don't bathe who are ordering ten thousand scratch off tickets. And I keep hearing their thing go bah, 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 like there's some king marching into it, and they they've won. And and here I go with my giant bag of Ziploc lottery tickets and I'm like under the laser. Sorry, not a winner. Sorry, not a winner. Now, Facebook tells you that the universe is gonna give you signs. Okay? The whole bag. Sorry, not a winner. I'm like, I know! 